Hey guys, how's it going? Good, hey, good. good to good. see you. Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, do you remember like five years ago when you guys came to visit and we made that awesome ping pong table together? Yeah, it was oh, yeah. a lot of hard work. Uh, yeah, well, I kind of ripped it in half and turned it into a transformer. What? Huh? In case you didn't catch the last video, I've been working really hard in our basement to turn it from an area that's about work into something that's about family. We're turning this entire section into an area where our whole family can hang out, play games, watch movies, and just spend time together. In the last video, I put up a whole bunch of recessed lighting which completely transformed the space, and then also added a big striped mural along the wall that I'm really proud of. I've still got a ton of stuff to do down here, but our next step is to free up some space so that we can add some seating. I've got a really big couch on order, and before it gets here, we need to make room. That's difficult because we have a giant ping pong table in the way. Now this table is actually pretty awesome. We made this with Evan and Caitlin when they were here visiting and it's a great memory and we use the table all the time, but when we're not using it, it's just too big. So I think I have an idea of how we can have a full size ping pong table when we want it, but then the rest of the time we can actually compress it down into something that's still a good size, but just not this big. Now, of course, as usual, I did model this new project in Fusion 360. I could just show you the model and you'd know exactly what it was gonna do, but where's the fun in that? I think it'd be more fun for me to actually build it and you just kind of see how it's gonna turn out. But I will give you the brief idea. For the idea to make sense, I have to tell you a little bit about this table. Both halves of the top of this are on hidden hinges. So, you can actually lift them up and there's storage underneath both halves of the table. I wanna take advantage of those hinges and instead of just having them be able to go like this, I want one to be able to flip over and line up with the other one, making the table half as big. But there's a problem with that, the frame. Now the cool thing about this frame table base is that it stores a whole bunch of stuff, but the bad thing is that it's huge. So we're gonna cut off half of that storage and instead make the table into two parts that can slot together to become much smaller. It'll make a lot more sense when you see it, so let's go cut some plywood. Pocket holes are all drilled, and so now we need to start putting this thing together. And I haven't really explained it, but it's very simple. Basically, the first part, the fixed part, is just gonna be a box. This is where all the storage is gonna be in the base. It'll have its own four legs around the outside, but then we'll have another piece that will slide onto it, and it's gonna have legs too. So you're gonna have two parts that are gonna be on tracks that are gonna slot together. But the first thing we have to do is build the box and then build the U piece that'll slot around it. Super simple box. Uh, pocket holes are awesome for stuff like this. But next up, we have to make the U that goes around this. And it's also very simple. Just a back piece, two side pieces, and they'll get pocket hold together. And then after that, we'll make the legs because that part's a little bit more confusing. So, simple construction, and now you can see how it's gonna move. And to make that movement work, I got some tracks. This stuff is called T-Track. It's got a little groove in it so you can slot something in it and it'll slide back and forth, but it's captured from coming out, except on the ends. It'd be perfect for putting in some sort of a guide so that we can slide these tables. So the plan is to route two slots in the side of this face that are the same depth as this, and then cut these down to length so that they don't cross over the ends. That way it's kind of a captured channel and the two pieces of the table won't come apart unless I want them to. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, you and I both know that everybody has stuff to deal with. Everybody has things that they're having a hard time with, but a lot of times we don't wanna to talk to anybody in our lives about it because we don't wanna burden them or we don't have an objective voice around us that we can trust. And that's why therapy is actually pretty fantastic. A therapist's role is to help you through hard things in an unbiased, objective way. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't have access to a therapist locally. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp has a network of over 30,000 licensed therapists. And the entire point of BetterHelp is to connect you with the right therapist so that you can get the help that you need. 
It's really simple. You go to the website, you fill out a little questionnaire that says kind of what you're dealing with, what your needs are, your preferences. And then most cases in about 48 hours, they will connect you with a licensed therapist. And from there, you can schedule meetings whenever is convenient for you and in whatever way is convenient for you, whether it's a video call or a phone call or a text message, there's a bunch of options. I will say that sometimes the therapists are not a really a good fit. And that's okay because you can switch therapists at any time for any reason at no cost. And since BetterHelp has such a huge network, you are definitely gonna be able to find somebody that's a good fit for you. Therapy is a great way to deal with things, to get through things, whether it's just the little things day to day or if you have some big significant problems. And if you think that's you at all, be sure to hit the link down below or go to betterhelp.com slash ILTMS and check it out. When you use that code, you're gonna get 10% off your first month. But the important thing is that you get the help that you need if you need it. Just be sure to go check them out if you need to. Big thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. So the sliding thing does work, but it's binding a little bit, and I think there's two problems and probably a couple of solutions. So the first problem is just friction. You've got big panels of wood sliding on big panels of wood. There's a lot of surface contact. A simple way around that is to add paste wax or some other lubricant onto the surfaces, and that will help them glide past each other a lot easier. But the other problem is geometry. Essentially, the part that's moving is just a big U, and there's not a lot of support in those corners. So the whole thing wants to rack if you're not pulling it evenly on both sides. It just doesn't have a lot of structure. Luckily, when we add the legs on the outside of these corners, they are gonna reinforce the corners a little bit, and if that's not enough, we can always add an L bracket on the inside of each one of these corners to lock it into the L shape so it doesn't go like this. That's awesome, wow. That worked way better than I thought it was going to. Look at that. This is kind of weird because the table's upside down so it might not make sense, but the legs on the outside of this moving end are gonna be exactly like the other table. They're gonna be attached here, they will come out with the table, but then this part that doesn't move has to be supported. So it's gonna have some kind of hidden tiny legs right here that are gonna stay in place. That will hold this part up while this part moves and neither one will have to weigh on the other. I think it'll be easier to understand if we go ahead and do the legs on this end, and then we'll deal with the difficult end later. And the easiest thing is just to show the old table because I'm mimicking the same look, same construction for the most part. On the old one, we have two of these pieces that are exactly the same, and they're just glued together along this seam, then they're glued and screwed to this surface from the inside. That made for a surprisingly strong leg made out of just simple plywood. And we're gonna do the same thing on the new table, except on one end of this, these pieces actually have to be able to come apart so that this piece can travel back with the extended table and this one stays in place. Now, I'm gonna make 14 of these legs of three different sizes. So I was trying to come up with like a good way to do all of them. And really, you could do it a bunch of different ways. You could use a CNC if you wanted to. You could set up a taper jig on a table saw or you could use a circular saw and a straight edge. That's what I'm gonna do. The fixed legs on that end are finished. They're fixed to each part of the table. So as the table expands, each corner still is connected to the ground through a leg. And on this end, it's gonna be pretty much the same except they're not fixed. One of them actually has to split. What I mean by that is that when you have the two pieces here in the corner, they can't be glued to each other because this one's gonna stay here and this one is gonna have to move with the table as it opens and closes. But unfortunately, that's gonna make them both a little bit weaker. So with the leg assembly here in the corner, all the force is gonna be moving in this direction and this leg's gonna go with it. And that's gonna leave this one behind. And unfortunately, with the force moving like this, this is not a great orientation for this leg. It's not very strong, so we need to reinforce it. So what we need to do is take another short piece that's going to sit right here and be hidden on the inside of the moving leg, but it's gonna give this corner structure. You'll see what I mean. Let's just glue it together. Thank you. 
So now the fixed part of the table has a nice sturdy leg that's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna hold it up just fine. And then this section will match up on the outside and then move with the moving part of the table. Now the only problem here is that the knobs are in the way. So I have to take those off, glue the leg on, and then use those existing holes to drill matching holes through here, and we'll just put the knobs on the outside. that piece wasn't strictly necessary, but it is gonna be useful because I'm splitting this inside space into two separate storage areas. This is the front of the fixed area. So the table's gonna expand in that direction. So my plan is to cut a big opening right here so that you can actually get to this space from underneath the table. You can reach in there to put ping pong paddles and balls and net and store other stuff in there. So on this other side of the table, the whole thing's gonna expand like this. So I can cut an opening here that will be covered up when the table is in its small state. I don't know what you call that. But basically we're gonna put an opening right here so that you can get to this secret storage area and you'll only be able to get to it if the table is open and you have to crawl up from underneath. So it's not really useful, but still kind of cool. Here's a little thing. I tried to use my blade to score the top veneer so that when the jigsaw cut through it, all the veneer didn't just tear up. Well, it still kind of happened. It did help, but it doesn't look great. Plus, I think my blade was old and probably the wrong one. Anyway, I think instead of just trying to work with what's here, I'm gonna 3D print kind of a cover that I can wrap around this opening. It'll look finished and I won't have to worry about the tear out. So now the base of the table is pretty much done and that means it's time to move on to the top. And that means, unfortunately, it's time to take apart the old table. Before I put these two parts together, I need to make sure that the plywood can slide on the carpet because that's not really a great combination. On the old table, I used these furniture sliders and they actually worked great. So I have the same thing in a strip form and I actually was able to get these the same size as the feet of the table. So I'm gonna stick these on and we'll see if it works. So the tabletops are now ready to be hinged together. To do that, I had to take out that center section and then replace that thickness with a piece of walnut on each one of the tabletops. If you wanna see how I put those together, just go check out the old video because it's covered there. It's really, really simple. But now, onto hinges. So this time, I invested about 30 bucks into a simple template that's made specifically for that hinge. Every one of those hinges have a different number and everything, and you have to make sure you get the right template. I will point out that each one of these is made for a specific model number of those hinges, so you have to get the right one. I got these bezels glued in and the top is almost ready to go on, except for one weird little thing. So the problem is that the table has two states. It's got the small state and the big state. In the small state, we wanna have the tabletop overhang the frame on all four sides so that we can slide people up to it and they can sit to play games and stuff. But that causes a problem for the big state. When the table gets big, both parts are doubled in length, but that means that the overhang here is doubled down here 
which means the tabletop is not supported. And the way around that is to make the tabletop slide. So my plan is to mount the tabletop to this end of the table in a way that it can slide on this axis only a limited amount, about four inches in both directions. Now you may not even have to attach the tabletop, you might just be able to set it on there and move it freehand, but I want it to be attached and I was looking around the shop for a good way to do it and I found this shelf pin. These shelf pins are cool because they've got a nice smooth stud on them that won't bind on anything, but they've also got a 90 degree angle so that you can screw them up into the underside of the tabletop. After I do that, the stud will go in this 3D printed track that I made, which will be screwed to the sidewall, and everything should move smoothly. And of course, I'm only telling you that instead of showing you that because I have to do it inside the table, and it's gonna be really hard to film. As I was laying the top on the frame, something occurred to me. I did a pretty good job of having both halves of these tables the exact same height, but the problem with that is that the one I need to move is gonna have a lot of friction on the top that doesn't need to move. So, what I'm gonna do is take this melamine edge banding, so it's very thin, but it has a little bit of a slick surface, and I'm gonna add this to the top of the fixed part of the frame. That way, the moving part of the frame is gonna be just a hair lower it will be able to pull out a little bit easier and the tabletop will be able to slide on top of the melamine when it needs to, theoretically. After sliding the tabletop back and forth a few times, I found that the shelf pin worked, but it would kind of bind sometimes and I think it needed improvement. So, I 3D modeled and printed this little sled that fits in the same track, but it works way better. We're gonna have the files for these included in the plans in case you wanna build one of these tables for yourself, but we're also gonna sell some sets of 3D printed versions of these if you don't have a printer handy. The top moves way smoother now, which means it's ready to play on, but I wanted to point something out. If you wanna see what this table would look like in your space, just pull out your phone and take a picture of one of these QR codes. You can see it in its big or its small version, and then you can decide whether you want to build one for yourself. Now, it's time for me to school my kids in ping pong. This thing turned out to be awesome. I love the fact that it will collapse into a smaller table and we've used it both ways already and it's really, really cool. And it's not even the last thing we gotta do in the basement. The next video is gonna be finishing the space out and we've got a ton of work to do to turn this into the ultimate hangout for my kids. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Hit subscribe down below, hit the bell and all that stuff. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for bloopers. I've still got a lot. I've still got a ton to do down here, but we're trying, I've still got a ton of stuff. Nah, wow. But next up are the strange leg shaped, <laughs> leg shaped. <laughs> I think it'd be more fun to be some, ah, blade and the blade. Wow, man. <laughs>